But I wanted you guys to know that because you don't have to have acres of land in order to grow hundreds of pounds of food. You just have to be smart about what you're growing. This is why I love living in the tropics, or at least on the edge of the tropics, is we get to grow food all year long. So I'm excited to show you what's been happening here in the, in, to, in, the, in the beds. Oh my gosh, so much has been happening. Look what we got going already. I mean, it's January. What are we talking about? Peppers, peppers, oh, peppers. I'm installing a whole butterfly garden right here. So I had invasive lantana here. I had the non-native penta. I've ripped those out. The only thing that I left behind that was still alive from when this was a mini butterfly garden before is our native sunshine mimosa. Like I mentioned, we want to look for different colors, different flower shapes, and of course we got to make sure we have a host plant in there. So you probably know saying the tool I'm using, this is called a mattock. Um, I know it's not traditionally what people use in a butterfly garden for digging holes. A lot of people are probably used to using shovels. Hey there, welcome to my urban homestead. Down here in Florida, there's so much going on in spring. I'm so excited to share it with you because today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you on a spring garden tour and we're gonna do for the first time on this channel, the whole thing. I mean, normally I just try to show you one part or you know, like I'll just focus on native plants or butterfly gardens or vegetable gardens. But today I just, I couldn't just do one. I had to show it all. But let's move into some of the other flowers. So we've got, of course, our butterfly garden, which is just looking gorgeous. We have the Coreopsis leavenworthi, which is native to my home state. Blanket flower. Then you've got these little purplish flowers here. These are beach verbena, which is native. There's, oh, right. So I made a second butterfly garden up front. Actually, this whole thing's basically like a butterfly garden, but this is a very much dedicated native butterfly garden area again. So what I've done here is this is Let's call it a uh, monarch milkweed madness because I put in a lot of milkweed. Hello. Hello, all my golf fritillaries. Okay, let's talk the vegetable garden. Oh my goodness. I'm super psyched. I am so excited for this. So, through the winter, right, we had some fertility issues with the soil because stuff was trying to break down. Now we have, oh, hi butterflies. Okay, just keep flying around, you do you. Um, we just had some different issues, then plants kind of labored a bit, and then I had some plants take off, but we really just never got the full coverage. But we've got it out, we figured it out. <laughs> heading out of the dry season, about to head into the wet season. And so we're trying to flip some of the garden beds so that one, they can either start the next round of crops like our sweet potatoes or get some more tomatoes in, get some other types of plants in. But we wanna clear this out before we start getting the torrential downpours of summer.
let's first start with the trellis because hello, hello, I am loving this combination. Oh my gosh, let's just look at the spot right here where we have actual passion flowers with our coral honeysuckle. Just so pretty. With the new butterfly garden, this is the Monarch Swamp Milkweed Butterfly Garden. I am super excited. Can we first, can we just appreciate that giant ironweed going up the pine? Is that not absolutely gorgeous? And look what I just saw. Look who's here. Hello. Did you put your chrysalis under there? Are you just drying your wings? I think you are. I see you. So fall Florida vegetable gardening season is literally just around the corner. We're right at the end of summer and my yard has done what a lot of Florida yards do when you <laughs> do vegetable gardening, which is either things died or they totally just went nuts. So in order to be ready for our really classic vegetables, right, which we know grow in fall and in winter and spring, I gotta get all of this back in order. Well, me and my husband, then he's gonna help me come out here because we got stuff we gotta get pruned. I mean, look at this arch, this is just bad. And we've got our main bed, it's not looking good. So I'm gonna take you around, I'm gonna talk you through kind of my game plan for getting ready for fall. Um, and then this is probably gonna go across a couple of videos because honestly, I'm not gonna get it all done today or this weekend. There's just a lot to do. But now is the time that if you're wanting to reset, get into vegetable gardening in Florida, this is the time to start getting ready so that you can really, really get those hot weather crops, warm weather, nope, warm weather crops, cold weather crops, and back to warm weather crops again. Yes. You wanted to know how I get black gold. It's legitimately lots of mulch. people in other parts of the country have to deal with this where like you plant your vegetable garden and then you just get just insane amount of rain. that might ask my neighbor's uh pump pulling from their yard just just, just dumping water out into the storm water drains 
because there's just, I can't believe how much rain we've had dumped. Well, no question that the soil's got enough water in it. That's for sure. What else does it have in it? Who knows? I feel like one of the challenges with vegetable gardening here in Florida is that so much of the like the northern parts of the country it's like you look for your frost date and then you you figure out there's like some sort of like four weeks later six weeks later some amount of weeks later you plant some things or you start your transplants two weeks before your last freeze date and like it's very like mathematical but we don't have a date like that in Florida there's no freeze date or last frost date or whatever the heck they call it like so you kind of just have to know like in fall I plan this and I either plant it in early fall or late fall. But like is there some precise timing? No, not really because sometimes fall goes a lot later or earlier. And like I talked about in the other video, like there's no like hard line of like, oh, fall has officially started. Maybe up in North Florida you start getting those cooler days, but Central Florida, South Florida, it's just kind of like, eh, I mean, I guess it's fall now. Having some challenges in the vegetable garden. I feel like this happened last year too. I feel like the fall vegetable garden always gets away from me because it's fall and there's a lot going on. All the okra falls down <laughs> and some of the plants have gotten a little challenged. So I need to go in and do some corrections, especially dealing with the Royal Ponciana. It has, I mean, you can see the branches are super, super low. They are shading out almost half the garden I mean, look at the second trellis. It's really bad. Um, so I need to knock this thing super far back, like super far back to really open up some light because everything I planted there, it sprouted and then went <clears throat> and I knew the shade was a lot, but I just, I didn't get on top of it fast enough. So we got to get it today. Um, and that's okay. we just, we roll with it. That's what I want you guys always to think. Like stuff happens, just adjust, keep going. All right, so now I'm gonna start opening up and get some more sunlight down in here. So what are those northerners doing right now? Putting their gardens to bed? Here in Florida, um, no. No, we've got a lot of gardening we can still do. This isn't supposed to happen now. This is supposed to happen like in January, February. 
why is it in the 50s and 60s and low 70s already? We are only in early December. I am completely unprepared for winter vegetable gardening. I, what is happening? This isn't normal for us. I mean, it's supposed to be like hot, like hot and just less humid right now. I mean, we might have a day that gets a little bit cold and you know, Florida cold, not Northern or cold, like Florida cold, like, oh my God, it's in the sixties, I'm pulling out a sweatshirt or it hits the fifties and I've got my hat, my gloves and my scarf on. We weren't supposed to get that in November, which we did. We're not definitely supposed to get that for multiple days in December. I mean, come on. If you are like me and you've lived a long time in Florida, you are so used to the fact that like, you cannot wear your ugly Christmas sweater for more than like a picture or two on Christmas day because it is just too hot and you have to have a Christmas t-shirt. So, hi. Hi. Now say bye. 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 Hey, mommy, tell them to hit the button with fun seconds. Well, why don't you tell them? Make sure to hit the bell and click the thumbs up button while subscribing too. Bye.